Yeah, just come closer, please. a very successful madrasa which runs Monday to Friday 5 p.m. to 6 30 p.m. We have assisted Tajweed Arabic classes from 9 30 to 11 30 a.m. every Saturday. Also if you would like to learn Tajweed for adults please get in touch with one of the organizers we also have a class on Sundays for brothers from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Crown Translation. For more information, you can speak with the organizers. organizers. We have also a committee just for the sisters, which means they run their own classes, events. Sisters can get together or involve themselves, speak to one another, and organize sisters' events. I would like to ask you also to support us in whatever way you can by helping organizing a class, supporting us financially or by any other way you think you can. If anybody, and I would encourage for you to motivate yourselves and get involved. Inshallah, we will have a sheet of paper going around where you can leave your contacts, emails, where we can get in touch with yourselves and keep you informed of what will be happening in the future in the center and inform you of the future events.
Today's event is in three parts. First part of the event will be, inshallah, Brother Abu Marisa Sajid is going to be doing a talk on jinns and black magic. The second part of the talk will be about 20 minutes of video showing how Rukia is being done. The third part of the event will be the question and answers. To move on, just a short introduction to the brother. The brother has been active Dai, caller to Islam for 20 years. And for the last seven years, he has been actively involved with doing Rukia. <coughs> His teachers, Sheikh Ibrahim at Turki, Sheikh Abdul Majid, and Sheikh Abdul Wahid Bali. This brother has wrote a book on Sword Against Black Magic and Evil of Magicians. These are some of the teachers of brother. The brother has a degree in civil engineering and he is currently working as a Cisco engineer. Without further taking any time, I'm going to Ask the brother to take off. Aaudhu billah. أعوذ بالله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Taslim and Kathir and Kathira. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And if you're any non Muslims, welcome. Today, inshallah ta'ala, bismillah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to understand together the concept of jinn, the concept of sihir, sihir meaning black magic, or kala jadu, okay? So jinn, sihir, and ayn. Ayn effectively means evil eye. Sometimes you can look to somebody and you can just give them evil eye. Sometimes auntie just looks at you and says to you, okay? and you're inflicted with evil eye. So we need to know these concepts. We need to know these answers. We need to know where these concepts and these ideas, where did they come from? And we need to compare these ideas with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the best example for us to follow is the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the best man to live until death came to him. No doubt about it. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. No Nabi is better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No man is better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one is better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So we need to make it very, very clear that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions 
It means that every action, the way we buy, the way we walk, the way we sleep, the way we trade, even to the extent the way we go to the toilet, even the way we fought, is from Rasulullah he tells us how to do it. This is from Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even the way you go to the toilet, SubhanAllah. People say, what? Rasulullah teaches that? No way. Yes, he did. He taught us even the way we make stanja when we go to the toilet. So how is it now that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't know about anything else? He knows it all. The Sharia has come for us. And we must follow Islam as a way of life. And the only being acceptable to Allah in the Allah, in the Allah, in the Allah, in the Allah, deen al Islam. The only deen acceptable to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Islam. The only deen is Islam. Any other deen is rejected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's saying the only deen acceptable to Allah is Al Islam and the Rasulullah Sallam. When Rasulullah Sallam came with the deen of Haq, when Rasulullah Sallam comes with the deen of Haq, all other deens, all other ways of life would perish. So as Muslims now, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to remember something, my dear brothers and sisters, that Islam is our yardstick and nothing else is our yardstick. Meaning we, every action we do, we ask Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every action we do, we ask Allah. How? We go to the Quran. We go to the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We go to the teachers of, of, we go to the students of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who are they? The Sahaba. And we learn from them. So whenever I quote you a hadith, who do I say? I say, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On the authority of what? Abu Harira, out on the authority of Anas, on the authority of Sansa. Because the, the teachers, the students of Rasulullah, we learn from them. So whenever we do something, we do it based on the Sunnah of Rasulullah, on the teachings of the Sahaba. That's why Rasulullah he said there will be 73 sects. 73 sects. In one hadith, 72 sects. In another hadith, 73 sects. And he said 72 will be in the hellfire. And one will be saved. The Sahaba asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah, which one is going to be saved? What did he say? What did he say? He said, the ones that follow me. And not only me, and my companions. Being my students. So whenever we learn something, we ask. The students of Rasulullah and who were the best students? The Sahaba. That's where we take it from, brothers. And this is so simple, brothers. You know why? We will never get confused. We will never get stuck with Peer Fakir. We will never get stuck with these issues if we stuck to the concepts and Islam from Rasulullah. This is very important for us to understand, my dear brothers. And if we fear Allah, and we truly fear Allah, we would follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my dear brothers, I would just like to tell you that by Allah, wallahi adeen, that I love you for the sake of Allah. And when you love somebody, you tell them you love them. You tell them you love them. And when I say to you, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you know what it means? It means I have a contract with you now. And in return, I have a treaty with you now. And in return, when you say, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu, it means that you are giving me salams back. In return, I do not backbite you and you do not backbite me. In return, I do not backstab you, you don't backstab me. If I make a mistake in this talk, the mistake is my mistake. But it's for you to rectify me. But not to go around and spread it around to Robert to go and Robert made a mistake. <laughs> you made a mistake. But everybody else knows except me. Except Uncle Sajid sitting down here. He doesn't know. You see, brothers? So when the salam is given to you, and I want to address this especially to the sisters, 
Because the sisters are the ones that will be occupying the hellfire more than the brothers. Because when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to the health, when he went to Israh Miraj, the seventh heaven, and he was toward the whole of Jannah, the whole of the, uh, uh, the, the Jannah or the, or the heavens. He was toward the heavens. When he was shown hellfire, he saw more women in the hellfire, burning in the hellfire. Why? Because of what? Kufr of Ni'mah. And Kufr of backbiting as well. Which one is Kufr of Ni'mah? The Kufr of Ni'mah is that you forget that what Ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. The Ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, your husband, and yet you backbite your husband. SubhanAllah. Whenever your husband told you to do something, why don't you do it yourself? That's the reply. So you see more women in the hellfire than the men inside the hellfire. So instead of them having ni'mah, they have naqmah. The opposite of ni'mah. That's what happens to them. So my dear brothers and sisters, remember the salam. The salam is so important, my dear brothers. Wallahi, many, many of these problems that exist today amongst the Muslim Ummah, that if we honor the salam, with each other. You know the Sahaba? The Sahaba, subhanAllah, the, when they used to be riding their horses and the evidence came down to Rasulullah about the salams, Afshiru salam, give the salams to your Muslim brothers. They were so happy. The Sahaba were so happy. Give salam, give salam alaikum brother. Salam alaikum brother, salam alaikum brother. They jumped on their horses, the Sahaba, and they started giving salams to everybody. Even to the extent they used to drive to, they used to ride their horses up to the tree Get off the horses, he says, Salaam Alaikum. And get back on the horses again. Because the Salaam meant something. Today the Salaam means nothing, my dear brothers. We are here, we backbite wholesale. Backbiting is wholesale nowadays. So brothers, may Allah save us from this, my dear brothers. And brothers, we need to understand that we are dealing with an enemy. Wallahi Azim, this enemy is Adu Allah, the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are dealing with this enemy. And this enemy, my dear brother, is the shaitan. This enemy is the shaitan. And verily, he is your enemy. He is your enemy. And what is the role of this enemy? The role of this enemy is to misguide you from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The role of this enemy <coughs> is to put certain ideas and certain concepts in the society to misguide you. How? Shaitan has many tools. There's just a video shop, just here somewhere, right behind us. The ma'a haram, I've seen on that video shop, I can't believe it. I've never seen that in London. Couldn't believe it. But yet you call yourself Muslim? And then not only that, they're renting out the movies to take to your house. And then you put it into another shaitan, the video. And then you're watching it like shaitans. To the extent that there was one father and one daughter in Pakistan. They were watching the movie. And you know what happened? They say in Urdu, Baap ne apni beti se mu kala ki. You know what that means? Just for those people who don't understand. Meaning they did something that you cannot imagine just because of the movie. So we say in Islam, whatever leads to haram in itself becomes haram. So brothers, we have haram everywhere. We look around you and we have the lack of understanding of the deal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Jealousy exists in the society. We have thrown the Quran over our shoulders. Just like the Jews threw the Quran over their shoulders. They knew that Rasulullah was the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but yet they threw the book over their shoulders. And we know, my dear brothers, that Islam is not our reference point anymore. It's left our reference point. And this is why many of the symptoms that exist today, sorry? Any, many of the symptoms that exist today, my dear brothers and sisters, it's because of us not following the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. sihir. 
i.e. gene possession. All of these problems that exist today is because we have lost our deen. And we need to come back to our deen. Many of the people nowadays, but the, even the people that are so-called practicing, they would read the Quran, the Quran like, MashaAllah. Listen to Sheikh Sudais. MashaAllah. Listen to his Quran. You say, MashaAllah. Am I right or wrong? You listen to many of the Quran, listen to the ones that read the Quran. They read the Quran so beautifully. But what happens? The same Quran, the same Quran is the Quran that will curse them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The same Quran is the one that will curse them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Let me just grab my phone. So my dear brothers, Sorry, excuse me. Okay. Okay. So, my dear brothers, we understand that the sihir, the black magic, is a problem in the Muslim community. And we know why it's a problem in the Muslim community. Simply because we have left Islam behind us. And you know what we've adopted? We have adopted something other than the Quran. Something unusual. Something gharib. Abu Farid. Something unusual completely we've adopted. And we need to wake up, my dear brothers. What have we adopted? We have adopted music. We have adopted soaps. We have adopted, for example, prohibited things. We have adopted frightening type of movies. We've adopted all this type of culture from the West. And when we turn around and say to somebody, but sister, you know your ear star beneath your khimar al is completely haram for you to wear it like that. She thinks, no, but I'm covered. You see, unusual. You think, she said, how can you say that to me? I'm covered. Allah says, we're khimar al So they get confused. They don't understand. Same thing with the brother. You said to the brother, but you know your beard is completely haram. Your beard is completely haram the way you've got your beard. Okay? And he will turn around and say to you, oh, brother, at least I've got a beard. And you know his beard is some designer type beard. Some harami type of beard he's got. Subhanallah. See, we've lost the deen. We are not following the adoption of Rasulullah sallallahu Instead, we have adopted the lifestyle of the gangsters. And this is why, brothers, there's a talk, inshallah, coming up. Inshallah, in um, Sheffield, it's called Jahannam, a gangster's paradise. And inshallah, I urge you to go to this talk, inshallah ta'ala, because you would learn the difference. There's exactly those type of concepts and ideas are going to lead you where? Jahannam, my dear brothers. So let's look to the concept of sihir. What is sihir? Sihir effectively means black magic. What is black magic? Black magic is effectively the agreement with a magician to basically make you from good health to bad health. To cause problems between you and another person. That is effectively sihir. And sihir is always tied in with jinn. We need to understand jinn before we understand sihir. So I'm going to speak a little bit about jinn and then we're going to go into sihir, inshallah, after that. But even the kuffar, let me make it clear to you, brothers. Even the kuffar understand this topic. Even the kuffar. Because where did this concept of sihir come from before? Black magic come from before? It came from the Jews. From the Kabbalah and so on. So it came from the Jews from before. And this is why you see all these movies that exist today from Hollywood. When you see Warner Brothers, Hollywood. They're at each other's necks all the time. And there's one example I'd like to give you, my dear brothers is that sihir is caused because of one concept, jealousy. Hasad. That's what it's caused by. Hasad. That's what it's caused by. You have jealousy with another Muslim brother, you say, okay, you've had it. So you go and you basically get ta'deez or you do something from somebody and it's sihir is committed. Look to this idea of the Warner Brothers issue. 
because it would bring something home. I want you to understand it in real terms. Warner Brothers were the ones that brought out Superman. You know Superman? The one that flies from Pan Island? You know, so I'll tell you, you see Superman? He's the one, he was the, the character of Superman came from Warner Brothers. But they never made any money from it. So what happened was Hollywood adopted the idea of Superman and because they didn't make any money on it as well, they cursed everything about Superman. They said they have cursed Superman and everything associated to Superman. Next minute, you see what happened to the Superman, the first Superman. He died in a car crash. Okay, and he had black magic. Okay, and Christopher Reeve, what happened to him? He fell off his horse, become paralyzed, and eventually he died. Louis Lane, what happened to her? She became some Majnoon, she had Janoon. Okay, she became crazy, father, and she just started walking the streets. And they just didn't know whether she was right or wrong. Okay? And then you had Richard Pryor. He died some unusual death as well. Death as well. So you have all these issues. It even happens amongst the Kuffar, my dear brothers. But let me speak to you, brothers, very quickly. Because I don't want to... It's such a big topic, brothers. That I don't want to speak a lot about it. Because the Fukaha and the scholars, they said, if you sit down and study this topic, the science of Sikhir and Jinn, it's equivalent to writing nine volumes of Bukhari. So you can imagine now, my dear brothers, I cannot cover it all in 40, 40 minutes. I can, I can just about give you a pinch of what it's about, inshallah. Let's first of all talk about jinn. Who are the jinn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created insan. You can see insan in front of you, human beings in front of you. So insan is what? Insan, he is, he is a, a living, thinking being with a fixed, visible form. A thinking, living being with a fixed, visible form. So when I see him, I know he's human. When I see him, I know he's human. When I see that person over there, I know he's human. I know he's not Janwar or something like that. You know he's human. Okay? But the jinn is a bit different. The jinn is a thinking, living being without a fixed, visible form. What it means basically, the jinn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created from fire. And the ins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has created from clay, mud, pure fire and pure mud. That's why sometimes when I am speaking to the jinn and I'm saying to the jinn, Ukhruj, leave in the name of Allah, otherwise you're going to burn in the hellfire. He goes to you, how can you burn me? I'm made from fire. SubhanAllah. So, so, so you knew, you, the answer to that, obviously, is that if, you have, if you're made from deen, if you're made from clay, and I'm made from clay, if I hit you, would you hurt? Of course it will hurt. So likewise, when you go into the hellfire, you know it hurts. So it's a different type of fire inside the hellfire. So the jinn themselves are completely different. Completely different. They can change their form. They are the unseen. They are the light. They are the unseen. They are made from pure fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Quran. They are made from pure fire. Iblis himself is made from the fire. But what was the difference between why was Iblis so loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initially, but then he was kicked out and cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know what it was? Kibba. Pride. Pride, brothers. We need to get it out of our hearts, brothers. You either take the traits and the attributes of the shaitan, or you take the traits and the attributes of the Sahaba and Rasulullah. You choose which one you want. And it's the giver that made Iblis racist. Racist. What did he say? He said, You are made, you want me to make sujood to Adam alayhi salam, and he is made from what? Clay. I'm made from fire. You created me from fire. I'm never going to make sujood to these people. Allah chucked him. Allah said, leave. You are cursed. But then he said, I would try to mislead the people. I would mislead the people. And today, my dear brothers, are the people being misled or not? 
Mislam. Wallahi mislam. Where is our dawah? Where is our Amr bin Ma'roof or Nahim Munkar? Where is it? Come on brothers, wake up. Why are we not involved in the dawah? When so many Muslims are being misled. And they are following the path of the shaitan. We need to wake up my dear brothers. And realize. And what are the types of jinn? There are many types of jinn. There are jinn that fly. And there are jinn that can change their shape to snakes and scorpions. There are jinns themselves that settle and they move. This is the hadith of Tabrani. Mentions all this. Okay. Where do they live? The jinn. The jinn normally live in deserted places. That's why whenever you move into a house, sometimes if you don't recite Surah Al-Baqarah inside the house, or if you don't make Adhan inside the house, the jinn will begin to play with you. If you don't say, when you go walk inside the house, Bismillah, Assalamu Alaikum, Rahmatullah, Barakatuh, Ya Ahl Al-Bayt, the jinn or the shayateen will begin to play with you. They will begin to share your wife, they will begin to share your food. They begin to share your family with you. That's what they do. Also, the jinn eat, just like we eat. But the food of the jinn is bones. They eat bones. That's why when you eat, my dear brothers, you don't take the bones and put them at the side of your plate. You take the bones and put them in a separate plate. Because it's the food of the jinn. And the one brother always used to say to me, he said to me, SubhanAllah, my jinn, he used to say, my jinn is very thin. Your jinn are fat. Because he used to know near enough to eat all the bones as well off the plate. He used to say it to me all the time. So the food of the jinn, the evil jinn, the food of the evil jinn is feces, doo doo. That is the food of the jinn. And we have evidences for that as well. If I start mentioning the evidences, well, I'll never finish. Subhanallah brothers, yeah, I've only got 40-45 minutes, inshallah, and maybe most of it's gone already. Also, the jinn themselves will come into your house and they will begin to steal things. Sometimes you, you, you put something somewhere, next minute it's not there, it's gone. The hug, yeah, where's it gone? I can't find it. You see what I mean? Because it's gone because the jinn has taken it. Because you allow the jinn to come inside your house. Also, the hadith of Rasulullah mentions that the jinn or the shayateen will come to your house, outside your house, and they will wait. They will wait to see if you make the dua before you go inside the house. If you do not make the dua, the jinn say, right, I've got a place to stay for tonight, and I am going to share the food and the family, I'm going to share with everybody inside the house, even the children. Because the food they will share, because if you don't say Bismillah, you see what I mean, brothers? So all these adhkar that Rasulullah he gave us, we need to make sure that we stick to them. We need to stick to them. And we know this famous story of Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira himself used to be in charge of Bayt al-Mal. And he used to look after the Bayt al-Mal a lot. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sorry, uh, Abu Huraira. And one day, somebody came and stole something from the Bayt al-Mad, lots of food, and left. And he, he grabbed this one, he grabbed this person. He said, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to take you to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He goes, how dare you steal from Bayt al-Mad? He goes, please, let me go. He goes, I promise you, I won't come again. He goes, please, 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 let me go. My family's in need, okay? And I wouldn't steal if I needed, didn't need to steal. So Abu Huraira felt pity for him, let him go. Because all right, mate, go. So he left. The next day, <coughs> Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, What did you do with your prisoner? Because there was a prisoner, because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew and that Abu Huraira took a prisoner. He said, He stole some food, I felt pity for him, I let him go. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Indeed, he goes, he will come back tomorrow. So the next day, Abu Huraira. He waited attentively. And he waited for this thing to come back again, this one, this person to come back again. He came back, he grabbed him. He goes, this time, I am going to take you to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He goes, no, please, please, I am not lying to you. This time, I'm really in need. 
really, really in need. So Abu Huraira felt sorry for him. He let him go. The next day, Rasulullah said, what did you do with the prisoner? He said, I felt pity for him. I really felt sorry that, you know, he goes, indeed, he's a liar and he is going to return. The next day, this time Abu Huraira is now ready. He's ready to grab him. Abu Huraira grabbed him. He said, now you had it. I am going to take you to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How dare you sleep for Great Bait al-Mal? He said, please, stop. I promise you, I will teach you some words that if you recite, I will never come back again. Never ever come back again. Abu Huraira said, teach me those words. He said, Allahu la ilaha illahu wal hayyul qayyum. The whole of it. Suratul, what is it? Ayatul Kursi. He taught him Ayatul Kursi. So he said to him, I will not come back. The next day, Abu Huraira saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, what happened with your prisoner? He said, I let him go because he taught me some words that he said he would not come back. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, indeed, that was shaitan. And shaitan is a compulsive liar. Okay, although he teach you something good this time, but he is a compulsive liar. So can you can see brothers that the shaitan was the one that was disguising, changing his form every single time and going to Bayt al-Mal and stealing from Bayt al-Mal. And also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the jinn themselves, they can change their form just like Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed them to pigs and monkeys. That's how quick they can change their form. Allah changed them into pigs and monkeys, subhanAllah brothers, they can change their form that quickly, my dear brothers. So remember that, my dear brothers. And we need to remember, my dear brothers, the battle between the Haq and Batil will always be there. The battle between the Maruf and Munkar will always be there. The battle between Bid'ah and Shirk will always be there, my dear brothers. Always be there. The battle between the Bid'ah and the Shirk. And we need to always remember, my dear brothers, that inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That we need to remember that from Allah we come and to Allah we will go. From Allah we come, to Allah we will go. Hasbin Allahi wa ni'am al -bakir. That only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is suffice for us. And nothing else suffice for us, my dear brothers. So we do not fear the shaitan. And remember, my dear brothers, that when I speak about the jinn, the jinn themselves, my dear brothers, okay, are not all bad. There are some that are good. Allahu Akbar. There are some that are good. And there are some that are bad. And the good ones are the ones that do not communicate with the humans. But the bad ones are the ones that try to harm the humans. So how do they become harmed? The jinn. You know inside your house, jinn always reside in your house. There's always jinn in your house. And the jinn inside the house are called the army. They are the ones that reside inside your house, always inside your house. Okay? Then you have the, the then you have the arwa. You have the different type of jinn, which are called the jinn that interact with the children. Their job is just to play with the children. They just play with the children, the jinn. And then you have the wicked jinn, which is the shaitan. After that, you have something worse than that, which you have is the mari, which is the demons, real evil ones. And then after that, you have something worse than that, which is ifrit, which is worse than that, brothers. Yeah. And they're the ones, in terms of strength, they become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. So you will have the shaitan, then you have the demons, then you have the ifrit, which is the strongest of them all. You will have. When you, have, when you are inside your house, my dear brothers, there are certain things, my dear brothers, we need to be careful of. When we, we're still talking about jinn, brothers. We're not going to sit here yet. We haven't spoken about sit here yet. When you're inside your house, brothers, if your lights begin to flicker inside the house, you have jinn inside your house. It's not a bulb which is loose. It's jinn inside your house, brothers. Okay? And if you are inside your house, walking around balbos, naked, all the time, okay, you're liable to be attacked by the jinn. If you are shouting in your house all the time, 
the jinn are not going to like it, they will attack you. If you are playing din din dah music all the time inside the house, the jinn are going to attack you. Okay? If your environment inside your house is un-Islamic, they will be on top of you. And that's what the hadith mentions, the jinn, he with the shaitan, will go on your shoulders and you'll play with your hair, nin, 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 nin. he'll play with your hair. To that extent, he's so close to you, he's on your head. Subhanallah, <laughs> can you imagine that? Can you imagine that, jinn on your head, playing with your hair? That's the hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is saying that, he's so close to you, he's on you. And with the majority of the houses today that we live in, today, you go to the houses, you see a picture inside this room. You see an idol here. You see something. I mean, what's that, brother? I don't know. I'll just, just put it there. Okay? What's that, brother? I go, that's a, a collection of my DVD movies. What is that over there? I go, they're, they're all my R&B music uh, tracks, right? From Snoop Doggy Dog to all, of, all, of, all the rest to the top. What's that over there? He goes, brother, that's my wife, Salam Alaikum. She come out all balboos, naked, with all her hair done up, splashed up in makeup. When she smiled, all her makeup starts cracking. Okay? SubhanAllah, brothers. Our houses are not even Islamic. Our houses are un-Islamic. Wallahi I think. Our houses are completely un-Islamic. We don't observe the deen inside our houses. And then we get attacked by the jinn and we start coming. I got attacked by a jinn. Brother, where's the Raqi? Call the Raqi. Let me a Rukia. Too late, brother. You cause the problem yourself. But yet you want, to, you want me to sort your problem out now. And then you say, brother, get the jinn out of this person. Many people, brother, I've done Rukia on. Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah, the jinn has left. But you know what? The person left the deen as well. And then when the jinn comes back in again, brother, you must have done something wrong. This is why the jinn came back to you. You must have done something wrong. No, brother, I've been praying five times a day. But when you speak to the other person, no, brother, this man, I've never seen him pray. You see, brothers? You see, your prayer is your protection. Salah is your protection. Fahshaham al munkar from your fahshah from the fahsha, from the, from the evil and the corruption is your protection from it, brothers. How many of us pray? Don't put up your hands, because I don't want to know. But how many of us really pray? How many of us, how many of us have good friends that remind you of Allah? Or do they remind you of Snoop Doggy Dog? Or do they remind you of Amr Khan? Or do they remind you of some woman? How many of us, brothers, Wallahi adeem, really does make you think, brothers, okay? And for us to contact the jinn, it's forbidden, brothers. Allah has made that clear in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, do not contact them, speak to them, because they will only increase you in your wickedness. So it's not allowed for you to speak to them. That's jinn in a nutshell, nutshell, brothers. They're unseen, they can change their shapes, they change their forms, you can harm them, they can harm you. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to be basically in um, he used to go to the mountains and he used to go to the desert and he used to basically read the Quran to the jinn and it's not for us to do that he used to read the Quran to the jinn because he used to carry the Sharia Rasulullah Sallallahu it's not for us now to go into the middle of the forest now and say Allah Billahi Ibn Shaitan Rajim and start addressing the jinn they'll attack you Suddenly you walk on the grass, brothers. You know, at night time after Salat al-Maghrib, you walk on the grass, okay? Or the grass verge. You can walk on the grass verge without saying Bismillah. And you step on the jinn. The jinn will attack you. You say, you, you, you say to yourself, I want to go and take a leak in a corner. And you don't say Bismillah, okay? They'll, they'll attack you. You go to the toilet. You don't say the dua before you go to the toilet. You go and have a bath. You don't make the du'a when you go to the bath. Who is to blame? You or the jinn? You, my dear brothers. Because Allah has given you the sharia. But you have left the sharia behind your backs. Allah has given it to us. How many of us, my dear brothers, have left the sharia? How many of us have left the deen? It's you brothers, not us. I'm not talking about you brothers here. I'm saying that the Muslims in general. How many Muslims are not practicing the deen? How many Muslims are involved in calling the Muslims to Islam? Giving the siha to the Muslims, brother, you're doing something wrong. Subhanallah, brothers. Okay, brothers, let's talk about sihir now. What is sihir? What is black magic? And this is a very, very, very complicated subject. The sihir subject. 
Some of the scholars, they, they define sihir as being something that appears to be false. That you see something that's there, but it's not there. Okay? Some of the people say that the sihir itself is to do with um, transforming good health to bad health. Some of the scholars themselves, they say the sihir itself is a transaction tied in with knots. Oh, good. Oh, good, with knots. Some of the people that say different things about sihir. But let me just round it out for you. What is sihir? I'm going to give it to you in real terms. Say for example, Auntie G, she has a problem with another auntie. Okay, so I'm going to mention the women because sihir is mostly done by women. It's the women that the ones that go to the magicians and they call and do sihir. So Auntie G, one second. Okay. Auntie, she would go to another auntie, and she says she would say, Bete, or auntie, she would say, Why don't you marry your beta to my daughter? She said, Nay, Kadini, never. Why? Oh, Rabbanai, you know? Akala Rabbanani, you know, he's not a good person. She goes, How dare you say that? How dare you say that? So she, what she would do now, she would go to a magician. A magician is somebody normally sitting in some jump inside Pakistan. Okay? He's sitting there somewhere. Or some, some sitting, it, sitting outside the masajid. Okay? Mingling with the people. And he said, what can I do for you, auntie? He goes, listen, they refuse my daughter. How could that happen? Could you go? Do something. So this evil magician, what does he do? He would basically read some shirky verses, some evil verses, calling the shaitan onto some, something horrible and evil. And he would write some numerical numbers on a piece of paper, and he would say, go and give it to the person. Go hide it in the house somewhere, dig it in the ground somewhere, the moment you dig it in the ground and put it somewhere, wherever you put it, at the end of the day, the jinn would come into the house or into the person. It depends who the instigator is. It will go straight to that person. You will be inflicted with sihr, which is called black magic. And what the purpose of the jinn is, is to give you waswasa. Give you loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of waswasa. Drive you crazy with waswasa. And it will start making you feel sick, start making you feel ill, to the extent that you won't know what's right and you won't know what's wrong. You will be so confused, okay, what is going on, what is right and what is wrong. And even Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam had sihir. But when we say that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had sihir, not as Nabi, not as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had sihir done to him by a Jew called Labid. And this Jew, when the sihir was done, he began to forget, not the wahi, he never forgot the wahi. He forgot as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He forgot as himself, as a human. Because there's two parts to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first part to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was he was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The other part to Rasulullah sallallahu was that he was Muhammad. As Muhammad, he used to go to his wives. As Muhammad, he used to walk. As Muhammad, he used to sleep. You understand what I'm saying, brothers? It was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he had it. And what happened? How did this Jew do the sihir? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mother's name was what? Amina. Amina is spelled what in Arabic? Amina, Alif? Mean. Many means. Amina. So what happens? Because the meme is linked to ma. What is ma? Water. So what did they do? He basically did the sihir, the black magic. Because it's linked to water, they hid the black magic in by the well. It was by the well. Until two angels 
came to Rasulullah One was stood by his feet, one was by his head. And they said to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have been inflicted with sihir. It got to a point that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam couldn't even move. That's how bad the sihir was from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the first thing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, bring the kappa, bring the one who does hijama. And he had hijama done on his head to relieve the symptoms of sihir. This is why we have evidence now to get rid of the sihir, we can have it, we can have hijama done on the head. Because it works. Alhamdulillah, to get rid of the sihir, if it's inside your leg, it's inside your seat, in your head, if it's inside your cheeks, we can get rid of it. Inshallah, be with the help of Allah by just doing cupping. By just doing cupping. And we know that helped to Rasulullah. And then Rasulullah turned sent two sahaba to the well. And then what did they find inside the near the well? A tree. On that tree, they found the ta'adiz. When they opened the ta'adiz, they destroyed the ta'adiz and Rasulullah was cured. Bismillah with the help of Allah. From this, what do we understand? We know that brothers, yeah, that anybody can inflict anybody with black magic. But bismillah, only with the permission of Allah. Only with the permission of Allah, brothers, it can be done. Okay, brothers. So this is the sihir, my dear brothers. Okay? And there are different types of sihir. I'm just going to go through different types of sihir, brothers. The first type of sihir that is quite common, that exists within the community today, and it's a massive sihir, brothers. The most common one that exists is the sihir of the freak. The sihir of separation between husband and wife okay that is very very common and it's the number one objective of the shaitan the number one objective of the shaitan is what to split husband from wife how do we know this hadith of rasulullah mentions that every evening the shayateen would send the army out to the people to misguide the people until one person one, uh, until one person, until they commit divorce or irrevocable divorce. And they were called splitting, arguing between husband and wife. The husband would begin to see his wife are ugly. The wife would begin to see the husband ugly. You think, how can this happen? How can all this happen? And then in the evening, the shaitan will come back to the throne of the shaitan. Where is the throne of Allah? Where is it? Above? The seventh heaven, not on the seventh heaven, above the seventh heaven. That's the throne of Allah. Where is the throne of the shaitan? In the Bahar, in the sea. That's the throne of the shaitan. So all the shaitan now, they will gather into the sea. All the shaitan. Iblis will ask each shaitan, each shaitan, he will ask them, What did you do for me today? He said, I made somebody eat haram. Good. Sit down, Idris, sit down. What did you do today? He said, he would say, not you, but what did you do today? He said, he would say, I myself made somebody uh, have a mortgage. I made you kiss a foreign girl. I made you lips up some other girl here. I made you do this haram. I made you do that haram. So all Idris, all the, uh, all the uh, shayateen will be made to sit down. It is, it is, it is, it is. Until one shaytan will get up. He will say, you know what I did today? I split husband from wife. Iblis will say, you did it. Idra, come here. Sit down. Take my throne. Sit down, you have a day off. Because he has done it. Because the number one objective of the shaitan is splitting husband from wife. And this is why, brothers, that the magicians that exist today Brothers, they would use this method of the freak to split husband from wife. And the majority of the ta'avizis which are done is because of this one, the freak, splitting husband from wife. And sometimes when you are making rukya, rukya is when you recite certain verses from the Quran over the person that's inflicted with sihr. The jinn would boast. He said, I made him do this today. I made him shout, I made him swear at his wife today. He posts 
until you have to put him back in his place. Ya Abdullah, how dare you even say that to me? By her father, by bones. Human bones. Human bones, brothers. Do you think to yourself, subhanAllah, does it go that far? The magicians are also told to wear the pages of the Quran under their feet and go to the toilets. Na'uzu billah. Na'uzu billah. Anything evil, they've been told to make a stanja, na'uzu billah, with the pages of the Quran. This is how far they go, my dear brothers. They're told to dig graves and sit in those graves with the pages of the Quran on the floor. Na'uzu billah, brothers. It makes you sick, brothers. This is why Rasulullah he said, he said to them, he said, Umar bin al-Khattab, when he went out, okay, and he was told to basically deal with all the jinn, all the, uh, the magicians, the sahibs, he said, Uhtulu kullu, he gets killed. Today, my dear brothers, we can't. Today we can't. Why? Because we haven't got the authority to do so. You need to have an authority to do so in the first place. But you can see, brothers, how they are so engraved in, in uh, what you call destroying people's lives. But yet you go to Pakistan, you go to Libya, you go to Morocco, they're there, brothers, all the time. The evil ones, you can see them there. Fee would you hear, you see it on their faces. You see the evil on their faces, brothers. Brother, you go look to any magician. He will scare you. Forget about Dr Dracula and Frankenstein. He will scare you. You go to some places in Morocco, my dear brothers. You'd be shocked, brothers, that one brother, he came back from Morocco, and he goes, he went to one of the bazaars inside Morocco, just to buy some stuff. And he saw an area in Morocco, just that deal with Sihir and so-and-so. When he went there, he saw some unusual things that he, he, he couldn't imagine that he saw, that he saw, like for example, like the face looked like a snake and the body was like a human body. Because Allah cursed them so badly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them like that. That's how evil they are, brothers. That's how evil they are. So remember, brothers, yeah, any sihr will only work with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, it would never work. Okay? Now, the sihr, I've explained to you how it works. So you have the instigator. The instigator is the one who wants to do the plot. The one who wants to cause harm to whoever. Then you have the victim, okay? Victim could be a member of the family. And then you have the person who is the target, the motive behind it all. Then you have the sahib, which is the magician. Then you have the charm, which is the ta'aliz. And then you have the assigned jinn to cause the problem. And this is what happens, my dear brothers. That's one type of sihr, sihr of tafriq. And there are, there are many symptoms of each sihr. Okay, and I'm going to go through them, inshallah. The other type of sihr, my dear brothers, is the sihr of muhabba, the sihr of love, sihr of muhabba. Some of the magicians themselves, they would do this sihr. Why? Why is the sihr of muhabba then? Say, for example, husband and wife don't get on. They don't get on at all. They're always arguing, always arguing, always arguing. One party, the husband or the wife, would say, I want a quick solution to this problem. So what he will do, he will go to a magician and he will say, I want to love my wife. And I can't, for the life of me, for something like that, he would say, I can't, it's some shirkiyat he would say, because I cannot make myself love her. I don't know why she always argues with me all the time. Do something, please. So what he would do, he would do a potion, mix up some stuff, and he would say, cough, cough, eat, or drink, or spill it outside the door. When you step over it, you're inflicted, and so on and so on. So what happens is there will be caused, there will begin, the jinn will come in, and this is the jinn of love. The jinn of love will come into the person and make that person love his wife. But the problem with this one, I've noticed, this particular sihir, it always backfires. Always backfires. You know what happens? The man begins to love every woman in the street. <laughs> he, just happens, yeah? he just looks at it, starts looking at every woman in the street. Oh, Allah, subhanAllah, she's more pretty than you. She's more beautiful than you. SubhanAllah, I wish I'd marry her. 
You know, subhanAllah. This is the problem. You know why? Because you can't expect shaitan to do a good job. You see what I mean, brothers? So you don't go. Just because somebody's got a problem, Sahir, sihir itself will never give you a total solution. It will give you a partial solution and then it will backfire. Because it's from shaitan. So it's from shaitan. So that's why, my dear brothers, yeah, there's another one. That is another one, brothers. Okay, that one happened. There's another type of sihir, my dear brothers. It's called sihir of infertility. Where the husband or the wife, she would go to a magician and say, Bacchiniore, I'm not having any children. Okay, can you sort it out? Okay? Or the other way around. The mother-in-law, for example, it's just an example, brothers, yeah? Okay? The mother-in-law would turn around and say that you do, right? You didn't get married to my choice. So tere bache ka din You're never going to get any married bache. You're never going to get any children ever again. So every single time that it comes down to them having relationship, they hate it. He hates it. Or she hates it. Whoever's done the sickness will begin to hate it. Will begin to hate the relationship between the two so they don't have any children. And every single time they could, she conceives, if the sihir is to do that she will only have boys, the jinn inside the body would see, to see if the egg turns out to, uh, to become a boy, then he would leave the egg. If it's a girl, he will abort it. And that's why women have, a lot of women have miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And this is what happens. And what happens is, the woman will, be, become, uh, the woman will, be, will start having a lot of what you call blood of vein. Blood of vein is, you have the period blood, which is your monthly cycle for the woman. And then you have something called blood outside that, which is called the blood of vein. Okay? And the jinn himself will go and sit on the ovum of the woman and stomp on the ovum of the woman and make the woman bleed. She should always bleed it. I dealt with one girl. She was only 12 years old. And she was just constantly bleeding. 12 years old, brothers. You think, what has she done? 12 years old. See, brothers? So this is how evil these people are. Okay? And then you have another type of sihir. The sihir of Junoon. Sihir of Majnoon, Junoon, whatever you want to call it. Pahal. Yeah? You have another type of sihir. Where the jinn is constantly conversing with the person. Giving the person not a lot of waswasa. So when he's walking in the street, he's just laughing to himself. You see him smoking. He's laughing because the jinn's telling him jokes. And he's just laughing to himself. Allah protect us from this, my dear brothers. Wallahi, but Allah protect us from this. And it, until it gets to a point that it will drive him insane. And then there's diagnostics. And he, he's diagnosed with schizophrenia. And you see those people, majority of the people who are inside the mental hospitals, which have been sectioned inside hospital, they have schizophrenia. And they have jinn inside them, which is the sea. Inside them. But Allah saved us from this one as well, my dear brothers. It's no joke, my dear brothers. The jinn will go into the mind and begin to play. And whenever the sihir is done, when the jinn enters the body, where does the jinn run? Straight to the brain. Because from the brain, it can control the whole body. It would play with certain receptors and nodes inside the brain, and it can control the whole body. The jinn can. And this is why, brothers, sometimes we, when we make rukya, where do we hold? We hold the head. And what, when, we, when we hold the head, where do we hold the head? The forehead, the forelock. Why do we hold the forelock? Because we know, even scientifically, that your personality is developed from this part of your brain. So when the husband is upset with his wife, and the wife is upset with her husband, the personality is formed from here. From this bit here, the personality. And if you know any neurologist, any doctor, he will tell you, where does the personality come from? He will tell you from the forelock. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the forelock in the Quran 1400 years ago. This is the miracle of the Quran. Wallahi adi. When Walid bin Mughira himself used to curse Rasulullah all the time. And he used to make poems against Rasulullah all the time. I think it's Walid bin Mughira. I'm not sure about this. Check this, brothers. 
one enemy of Allah basically. He was attacking Rasulullah all the time. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the ayah, I will grab you by your forelock and teach you a lesson. This area. Forelock. And this is where your personality comes from. This is why, brothers, the jinn, when he enters you with the sikhir inside the body, it would run to your head first and it would control your brain first. This is why we hold the forelock, forelock like that and we make rukya. You understand, brothers? Because they begin to feel it on their forelock first and then it travels down to their body, wherever it may go afterwards. Okay, when the rukya has been made. I haven't gone to the rukya bit yet. The other type of sihir, my dear brothers, is the sihir of bewitchment of the eyes. And this sihir itself, brother, happened at the time of Musa alayhi salam. And we know at the time of Musa alayhi salam that there was uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically mentions it in the Quran. He says to Musa alayhi salam in front of Fir'aun, you throw the rods first, or I throw the rods first. There's a challenge between the two, Fir'aun, and Musa alayhi salam, which one are you going to throw first? He said, you throw, because there's a challenge between the two. So from there we know that the sihir is a challenge for us. We can challenge the jinn, no problems. The, sh the sihir and the jinn, we can challenge it. So we say, he said, you throw first, I throw first. You say, who throw first, I throw first. Eventually, who threw first? Who? The magicians of the Fir'aun, they threw first. And they saw, is nothing until Musa alayhi salam he threw his rods and he threw his uh, stick or whatever you could call it or the or the ropes okay and it turned and made to appear to look like it didn't say it turned into a serpent or snake it made to appear to look like and this particular second brothers is used between the freak a lot the wife will begin to see her husband ugly why do you see me ugly for I don't know. Sometimes I look to you and I see you ugly. Okay? SubhanAllah. I see you like a, I see you like a, like a baboon. You know? Wallahi brothers, you'd be surprised. I see you the most ugly way. All the time whenever I think about you, I, I, I can't stand being near you. Whenever you come close to me. But when I'm alone, I'm fine. Whenever I'm alone, I'm fine. But whenever you come near me, I begin to see you in an ugly night. And this is the secret of bewitchment of the eye. That the jinn would try to destroy the relationship between the husband and wife using this method. Using illusions and delusions as well, the mind. The other type of secret itself is the, the secret of bayan, which exists, okay, which normally doesn't have jinn involved in this particular one. The secret of uh, uh, the speech of the person. Today we see a lot. You see some of the ways Obama speaks. It's just Sihr of Bayan. You see the way some people speak, some beards speak, Sihr of Bayan. The way he mesmerizes the crowd and they become attentive, so attentive, they call it Sihr of Bayan. And that exists. And then you have the Sihr of sickness, Sihr of Marida, or sickness. The Sihr to make the person so sick, ill, and so and so. And these Sihrs exist, brothers. Let me just quickly, very quickly, before I finish, brothers, um, go through the symptoms very quickly of each sihir. That way, if you know of somebody who's got them, the Iznillah, we can deal with it. Sihir of separation. Sihir of tafriq. Note these down, brothers. Write them down, and you know, brothers. Okay? This is separation of tafriq. Split between husband and wife. Okay. The husband or the wife will begin to see the other party ugly, mm, like a monster. Okay. Also, they will begin to argue over just small things, chutia chutia, really small things, small th issues. They begin to argue. They split and argue. You, the woman who's got the sihir, or the man who's got the sihir he would begin to feel, or she would begin to feel more relaxed outdoors than indoors. Okay? And in relation to arguments, brothers, I was doing some reading in relation to arguments. The kuffar themselves, they have something called narcissism. Narcissism, brothers, here, yeah, is a personality disorder that exists. 
where the wife, normally the wife, I would say, begins to bully her husband so badly, really bullying tactics. She, she becomes, she has unreasonable expectations. She becomes, she, she becomes verbally abusive to her husband. She begins to gaslight. For example, I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't say that. You, I, I didn't hear you say that. I didn't hear him say that. They begin to gaslight, being a lot. And they put somebody in a hopeless situation into a corner that they don't know what to do. And that leads to something called Stockholm Syndrome. Okay? Stockholm Syndrome is that a person's got so cornered in a corner, he begins to accept what the other person's saying. And brothers, that is something, a disaster. And you know what? Most men, they're in a, they're in a relationship, even the kuffar, they're in a relationship which is such an abusive relationship, where the wife now, she begins to beat her, her husband, bully her husband, she uses crazy tactics, she becomes emotional, she becomes a control freak, she begins to have this grandiose type of mentality. She begins to control her husband. Okay, this is Sihir Prophet. We understand it as Sihir, they understand it as a personality disorder, my dear brothers. Okay, brothers. The other thing about, the other symptom, brother, brothers, is that the husband and wife begin to feel uncomfortable with each other or the intimate relationship. The other one is uh, the Sihir of Muhabba. Okay, we're talking about Tiwala. Tiwala is a specific Da'avis which is made with the Tiwala of love. Specifically to bring husband and wife, okay, together again and so on and so on. The husband himself, he begins to love his wife excessively, over the top. I love you. I can't live without you. So he begins to behave like a woman and he begins to sit in the corner of the, of, of the house. He goes, don't go, don't go. If you go, and he begins to stop trusting his wife. He begins to stop trusting his, uh, his wife. He goes, you can't go out. If you go out, I don't know where you're gonna go. So he begins to stop trusting his wife anymore. So there's problems start happening, and so and so. And that is what you call the sifir of muhabba. Excessive love towards the other party. Excessive love towards the other party, okay? Extreme desire towards the other party. You know when this is normally done? You know when they get married? Before they get married, one party will do the sihir onto the other party. And then what will happen is that it will start happening between the two. And they begin to go crazy with each other or one party will go crazy with the other party, excessively, over the top. Always want to be impeccable, all the time. SubhanAllah, okay? And the other one is impatient. They become so impatient, they have to have the uh, copulation or the relationship there and then. Doesn't matter where it is. And they get upset if they don't get it. SubhanAllah. And they have extreme desire and lust for that wife. So it's normally done before the marriage. So the person begins to love his wife. He goes, come and jump, come shadi, jump, jump, quickly. Get the shadi sorted out, quickly. I can't wait, I can't wait. He goes, yeah, sabr, bro. You know, SubhanAllah, he goes, sabr, ka pal, bi jala diya. He goes, I need to get married. I don't care what happens, I need to get married. I can't wait, she's my love of my life. When they get married, the sihir begins to wear off. I never loved you in the first place. SubhanAllah. You see that? Prophet, SubhanAllah. You laugh. But Wallahi Adim, brother, it's a serious issue. Okay? You become blind obedience to one's wife. Blind obedience to a wife. You know when a husband begins to follow his wife blindly? The kawama goes. The kawama means the authority of the husband goes, finished, down the drain. And if you look at the majority of the houses, brothers, especially amongst us Pakistanis, who's in control, mommy or daddy? Oh, mommy, in majority of the cases. Obviously in your case, brother, daddy is in control, mashallah, that's good. Okay, alhamdulillah. But in most of the cases, you know, it's the mother that's in control. Why? It does make you think. Brothers. Also, the sihir of tahir. Uh, the sihir of tahir. Inshallah, I'm just going to finish up these points. With you, yeah? There's another point here, brothers, okay, where you begin to see objects that begin to move in front of your eyes. You're sitting down watching TV, and suddenly you see the remote control moving. You think, what's, what's 
scan on it. It's moving because it's the delusion. So illusion of the eyes that are making the mulumat which are real. So something small appears to be big. Something big appears to be small. Something small appears to be wide or large. So you begin to see things that move in front of your eyes. It doesn't feel right. You know it's not right. That is another type of sihir, which is sihir of seeing false objects. And this one's a nasty one, brothers. You know why? One man, he kept on seeing steps. Steps, steps, steps. You know steps? And you know what he did? He opened his window. He was living on the fourth floor. He saw steps. He thought he was going to walk on the steps. He jumped out and he died. But you see, brothers, sometimes when people suddenly hear somebody just fall out from the 50th floor, he's not going to fall out of the floor before just, oh, one day I feel like dying. He's not going to do that. Something must have made him do it. There's a cause for it. That's something that made him do it. Okay, brothers. Frequent headaches. Frequent headaches, brothers. Okay, sorry, brothers. Sihir of lunacy. Sihir of lunacy, brothers, is Sihir of being mad. Severe absent minded. You forget. Every single time you say to your wife or your husband, go make me a cup of tea, <coughs> go into the kitchen. Why are you in the kitchen for? Somebody sent me in the kitchen for what? Why? I'm in the kitchen. You don't understand why you're in the kitchen. Then you go back and say, Did you tell me to do something? Yeah, I made you told you to make me a cup of tea. Okay? Okay then, go in the kitchen. Come back, tea's not even made properly. You bring back an empty cup. Say hey, Chapio. There's nothing in there. SubhanAllah. Unclear speech. The person begins to speak gibberish. He doesn't speak clearly. So he mumbles. He doesn't have sync with his brain and his teeth or brain and his tongue. There's no sync there at all. Okay? Bulging eyes. You look to him, you know he's mad. You know he's mad. Funny thing is, brothers, you know, subhanAllah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in most cases, on this issue, you're not going to be accountable for it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when, the, when, he, when, uh, when, when the fuqaha, the scholars spoke about this, he said, they said, there are two types of mad people. The first type of mad person is the one, when you look to him, you know he's mad. You know he's majnoon. You know the pen has been lifted of the paper for him. Meaning he's not, his, his actions are not recorded. He is saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other person who is mad is the one who knows the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but doesn't implement the wahi. He is mad in the eyes of Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, Sa'ala sa'ilun bil adhabil waqi lil kafirina laysa lahu dafu. Allah says that sa'i, the questioner will ask the question on yawm al qiyamah. Is there going to be any punishment? And Allah will say to you, did you do your responsibility that I told you to do? Very quickly, brothers, suffocating at night. When you feel suffocating at night, you can't breathe at night properly. Okay? Especially after Maghrib. Asr, at the end of Asr and Maghrib, you start feeling it. You can't breathe. You, you're gasping for breath. You can't breathe properly. This is another sign of Seher of Janun. The inability to do a task what I mentioned, I told you to make something, but you never, you don't, you forgot. Disinterested in one's appearance. The person doesn't care about himself. He likes to live rough. He's smelling, he's stinking all the time. This is another sign of uh, Seher of uh, Junoon. The other type of Seher, it's uh, the Seher of Lethargicness. The person begins to feel lethargic, weak, always, you know, want to sleep, always isolated. He becomes an introvert instead of an extrovert. He, all these issues, he's in constant silence all the time. And um, he's anti-sociable. He's absent-minded as well. He gets frequent headaches, a lot of headaches. Loads and loads of headaches he gets, okay? The other type of sihir is the sihir of hawatif. This is a very nasty one, brothers. This is the one that normally gives you dreams, bad dreams, the sihir of hawatif. Then the patient begins to experience nightmares. The patient begins to see dreams where someone's calling them in the dream. It's a silhouette, you don't know what the person, somebody's calling you. The patient hears voices when he's awake. Always voices, what's what's up? The patient themselves always has suspicion. The patient themselves is, has sleepless nights, he cannot sleep, he's always thinking, his mind's in override. Okay? He has scary dreams, he sees animals, he sees black dogs, he sees snakes, 
all these kind of things will have will happen with this person and that is the sihr of hawatif which is to do with bad dreams the other one is brothers is the sihr of black magic to do with illness sickness marida or mir mari constant pain in the body always pain in the body why is this pain there especially when the quran has been recited on the person you will begin to feel pain total paralysis of the body the body has, doesn't know which way to go it moves this way then it moves this way unusual places and so on so on. epileptic fits okay also the blood uh, the seher of nafis the one i said that the one that bleeds bleeds all the time the woman will begin to have miscarriages irregular uh uh, uh, irregular periods and so on and so on. Seher of impending marriage. This is a common one, my dear brothers. Seher of impending marriage is a nasty one, brothers. Seher of impending marriage is where you want to marry somebody and somebody prevents you from marrying that person. Okay? Then you end up marrying that person anyway. Then, that per then somebody else, the mother or the father, because they're not happy with the marriage, they will do seher of impending marriage. So when, when the time comes for marriage, you will never get married. I know some sisters that have come up to me, they are 45, 46 years old, but they cannot get married. Every single time a proposal comes, in the last minute, it's broken. It just breaks. And there are reasons that why that happens. I, can't, I don't have the time to go through that, brothers. But again, you, the, the symptoms for that is absent-mindedness, pain in the lower back. If somebody's got pain in the lower back, a lot, lower back, a lot of lower back pain, that is a sign of impending marriage, my dear brothers. And the general case of failed marriages. And there's other issues as well, brothers, that we have. Finally, very quickly, brothers, what is the solution? Very quickly. Okay? If the sihir is eaten, my dear brothers, you will have senna. Senna itself, brother, is a herbal, uh, what you call leaf okay it's, some people know it as senna pot but we're talking about senna the leaf the leaf you will boil it make jar of tea out of it and you will drink it on the empty stomach and the sihir will pass through the back passage <coughs> inshallah bismillah and rasulullah mentioned the hadith about senna he said if there was any cure for death it would be said but there is no cure for death see the other way you can get rid of the sihir is by cupping. Rasulullah he said about cupping, he said, cupping is a healing for free. You can either get honey will heal you, cupping will heal you, and culturization will heal you, which is which you burn the area. Okay? And he goes, that is forbidden for you to do. The third one is Rukya Shariya. The Rukya Shariya is when you recite certain verses of the Quran upon a person right up to his ear and if you see the majority of the Raqis brothers they don't stand far back and they recite on the person they will stand very close to the person they will stand very close to the person okay and they would sometimes go right up to the ear of the person and they would say A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem A'udhu Billahi Sabiyun Aleem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbina Lameen, Rabbina Lameen. See? So you remind them of Tawheed. Because when the jinn is inside the body, you remind him of Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. Rabbina Lameen, Maliki Yawmiddin. You see what I mean, brothers? So you remind them of Tawheed. The jinn doesn't like that. Jinn does not like that at all. He hates it until he begins to react. When he begins to react, he will speak on the tongue of the person. Obviously, his brother's not possessed, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Okay? He will begin to react on the tongue of the person. On the tongue of the person. So he will speak on the tongue of the person. When he speaks, he will speak filth, brothers. He will attack Rasulullah. He will attack Allah. He will attack the Quran until you continue to recite. You continue to recite. Continue to recite. Continue to recite. You begin to burn it with the Quran. Burn it with the Kalam of Allah. If you continue to speak the way you, like Allah, tie your tongue, you make dua against it as well while you're making the ruqya. And this is the way you would make ruqya. And Rasulullah said the best ruqya is the one you do upon yourself. Hold your forehead. Make ruqya on yourself all the time, brothers. The adhkar on yourself all the time, brothers. Especially after the Salat al Fajr. 
and Salat al Isha. Very, very important. Rasulullah said, Two Salats are hard on my Ummah, but they are so beneficial for my Ummah. And he said, Fajr and Isha. Fajr and Isha, brothers. Hardship on my Ummah, but they're the best Salats, brothers. Wallahi, brothers. That's why at the time of Fajr, what you would do, brothers, you would basically say, La ilaha illallah. وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير a hundred times okay no evil will touch you in the morning when you wake up have your seven dates preferably ajwa dates if you can't get hold of ajwa dates you have Medina dates and no evil will touch you you have tawakul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no evil will touch you the last two verses of surah al-Baqarah will protect you inshallah ta'ala go to sleep with wudu when you go to sleep with wudu, Allah will appoint an angel to protect you when you go to sleep with wudu. Which we know even would go near you at that time. The Fajr brother, <coughs> brothers, is very, 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 uh, very, very important, my, my dear brothers. And there are certain verses, brothers, that you can <coughs> recite. In relation to you getting possessed by jinn, just by jinn, brothers. Jinn will possess you for four reasons, brothers. We're not talking about Sidr now, we're talking about jinn. The first reason the jinn will possess you is severe anger. Anger. If you get angry a lot, jinn will possess you. Okay? Intense fear. If you're always scared, watching movies, watching exorcists, watching this, watching that, watching this, Dracula, Frankenstein, I don't know, uh, uh, Dawn of Evil Dead or something like that, or whatever. You're watching these movies and you're scared all the time, you're gonna get possessed by their brothers. Because you don't fear Allah, you fear the movie. That's what it is. The other one is, is indulgence in desires. A lot of desire, brothers. Desire, 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 meaning sexually desire. Even with your wife, that's why we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we have copulation with our wives. Okay? Wives, inshaAllah. Brothers. Inshallah, brothers. Wives, inshaAllah. Okay? Inshallah. Allah give us, inshaAllah, many wives, inshaAllah. In this dunya and in the akhirah. And the one who does command in good and forbidden evil, my dear brothers, just for your information, make you the iman increase your iman, inshallah, so the jinn keep away from you. Okay? But there is one Hurul Ain, one maid of Jannah, brothers. And obviously, alhamdulillah, Rasulullah he said, What do you like most? He said, I like women. I like utter, and I like my milk and my cushion. He said that. So, Rasulullah said, say, He said, I like the women. Because I like to play with my horse, I like to play with my wives. You see what I mean? So Rasulullah he loved women. And we know that because he had nine wives. But obviously for us, no nine wives, Allah blocked it at four. But at least do two, inshallah, or three, and subhanAllah. But there's one hul al aim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, inshallah, this one. Because she is the most beautiful one. She is the one with bigger eyes. She is the one that has all the credentials, inshallah. And her name is Al Aina. What a beautiful name as well. Allah Akbar. Al Aina. She will keep you happy and she is the most beautiful of the beauties inside Jannah. Allah give us that, inshallah. And Rasulullah said the first wife is what? Half your deen. Yeah? The second wife is what? Anybody know what the second wife is? First wife is half Eden. What's the second wife? Al Baraka. So she give you Baraka, the second wife. What's the third wife? Rasulullah said, "Let me say." Makhfira. The third, third wife is Makhfira. What's the fourth wife? She will save you from the hellfire. So go for the fourth brothers. Inshallah, brothers, save yourself from the hellfire, brothers. Inshallah, go for it. Inshallah, don't sit around do nothing. Come on, brothers. But do the dawah as well, brothers. Do the dawahs. So brothers, the last one is complete negligence of the deen. So brothers, inshallah brothers, you know what? I tried to cover as much as I could, bismillah, brothers, for the topic of um, sihr and jinn. And remember brothers, don't forget the ayatul kursi at night as well, brothers. Very important to recite ayatul kursi because the ayatul kursi itself will protect you using the malaika and the angels, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, wa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair. If there was any mistakes, my dear brothers, those mistakes are from me. Inshallah. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correct me. And if, if there was any good, the good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I'll pass it over to the chairman. Jazakallah khair. Before we move on to the second part of the night, I would request you all to remove the children from the hall into the back room. All the children who are under 16, because we're going to watch a video film, and it's not decent for the kids to watch this. We jealousy is rampant amongst us today. So if a sister is concerned about her husband, if a sister is concerned about her husband, there are some brothers here, very good brothers here, inshallah ta'ala. And you should speak to some of these wise brothers to address your husband. Because your husband to stay in that state, it could mean in some circumstances, until the bayan is being made on your husband, your husband could become haram for you. So remember that, sisters. Uh, the sister who asked the question, inshallah, they need to speak to some uh, somebody in the family or speak to me. It's not a problem, inshallah, they can speak to me. Or somebody needs to speak to the husband. If he's taking drugs, if he's taking alcohol, he's doing things against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means that he's going to be accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, that's going to leave him exposed to being attacked by the jinn. It's going to be, leave him exposed to be attacked by the shayateen. It's going to leave him exposed to be attacked by the kufr concepts that live out there. So we need to help our Muslim brothers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Deen and Nasiha. We need to give our Muslim brothers Nasiha. We can't just be practicing and be selfish that Islam only belongs to us. We've got to spread Islam. We need to, the word uh, Islam itself comes from istislam, meaning submission, full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to make sure that all of us practice Islam and make others practice Islam as well. Because what you love for yourself, you love for your Muslim brother. What you love for yourself, you love for your Muslim sister. You want your Muslim brother to go to Jannah. Am I right or wrong? I want you to go to Jannah. Well, when I started my talk, what did I say? I said, Wallahi, I love you for the sake of Allah. If you come to me for help, it becomes an obligation for me to help you. Because you are Muslim brothers. If any sister comes to me for help, within my capability, if I can help her, I will help her, inshallah ta'ala. As long as it's within the realms of the Sharia. Islam. So inshallah, this sister, she needs to contact somebody, inshallah. Okay? The other question is that, is it a sin for a wife to get a ta'viz for increasing the love relationship and maintaining good relationship, maybe with the husband, is mentioned in here. Of course it's a sin. Rasulullah he said the first thing that will take you outside the fold of Islam is shirk of billah. Shirk against Allah. Associating partners with Allah. Do you know what the second one is? Sihir. So brothers, make sure that inshallah ta'ala that and sisters don't be so much in a hurry to seek a solution which is other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You only refer to Allah. You love Allah, Allah will, run, Allah will come to you and you can seek your solution from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't seek any ta'aviz, because ta'aviz is backfire. Ta'aviz are there to make you not practice Islam. Wallahi, although they might do the job, but the problem is they will make you stop practicing the deen of Allah. Anybody who is practice, anybody who is ta'aviz on them, anybody who has sihr on them, I guarantee you, they find it difficult to pray. Difficult to pray. I know one brother, he could not even lift his hand to Rafael. He could not even lift his hands up to say Allahu Akbar. He was so difficult, he couldn't do it. He was shaking. Because he had ta'aviz and he had uh, what you call um, sikhah on him. So for any woman or any man, any woman or any man to seek ta'aviz, other than the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'aviz other than Allah, 
when I talk about other than Allah, meaning they are specific. For us, the da'wees that we do is Rukya. That's the da'wees we do. But anything other than Rukya, which is not from Islam, we leave it. Because we, if we ask, we ask who? Allah. If we ask for help, we ask who? We ask Allah. So remember that, my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah. One question. Okay, brother. The brother Chay said one question from. Uh, uh, I just mentioned the issue of Tawiz. Can you explain to the brother Chay the correct manner of um, getting rid of the Tawiz? Very good question, mashallah. Jazakallah khair for this, yeah. This is where we're going to get a lot of interaction. The, the best way to get rid of a Tawiz, to be honest, I'm not sure why brother Abu Muhammad actually saved all those Tawiz. I really don't understand why. Honestly speaking, I'm here in, here I'm in a box and they want in the Rukia water, you know. So I don't know how. Maybe he sprayed them with Rukia water. Allah, Allah. I don't know. I don't want to accuse my Muslim brother of stuff Allah. But the correct way of getting a Ta'aviz, if you find a Ta'aviz in your house, okay, the way to get rid of the Ta'aviz, the Ta'aviz is normally, normally folded like this. Okay? And what they do with the Dabis, they put a black, what you call, uh, string inside the Dabis. And on the, on the string there's certain knots, okay? And the knots themselves are the, the signet. The knots themselves are the spell, okay? Naffa satif al okay? They are the, so what they will do, they will get the, um, the knots from the Dabis, the magicians, and because we say the rukia is on the breath, okay? So what they will do, they will just make the shirkiya du'as, call in, in the jinn, and they will tie the knot in the stream, and they will bite it in their saliva, their dirty saliva, okay? And that will, that will tie in the spell. And then in the ta'aviz itself, they will call certain, what you call, Shayateen and Sha'sa and Jinn. And uh, they, those are the Jinn that will be called to protect the Ta'avis. Those are the Jinn that will be called to protect the Ta'avis. Sometimes what they will do, they will bury the Ta'avis outside your front garden. Sometimes they would use nails. They would tie in the nails into the doors. Sometimes what they would, they would do, they have different methods for this. Sometimes they would put nails inside a bottle of water and they would bury it in the ground, deep inside the ground. So when you step over it, the person would be inflicted. Every single time he steps over it, will be inflicted. Now the correct manner to get rid of the Ta'aviz, brothers, is how? You would get a bowl of water. You would recite the verses of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. You would recite Ayatul Kursi. And you would recite the last three kuns of the Quran, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Farak, Surah Nas. Okay? And you saw Brother Abu Muhammad doing it to protect himself when he was opening the Ta'aviz. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil farak, min shabri ma kharak, wa min shabri ghasikin iza waqab. You heard him doing that. It's to protect himself from the Ta'aviz. So whenever I go to someone's house to remove the Ta'aviz, you need to be protected first because they will attack you. So what you will do, you will get the water, Normally add some salt in the water. The reason you add salt in the water because it makes it more potent. So what you would do, you will recite the verses of those verses that I mentioned on the water and you will make naf in the water. You will open the ta'aviz and you will begin to tear the ta'aviz. You, when you tear in the ta'aviz, you are reciting Qul A'uzu bi Rabbil Falaq continue continuously on your tongue. You would blow. And then what you would do, you would rip it up and you would put it into the water. Leave it overnight, okay, and then you go and spill it into the river, the local river, the sea, or whatever. Okay, and that is the safest way. Do not burn a Ta'aviz. Very important to remember that. Do not burn a Ta'aviz. Because many of the ta'avizes that exist today, by you burning them, it will set off a secondary spell which would inflict you. And also some of the ta'avizes, they will have wax in it. 
So when you wear it all the time, they become waterproof. They become plumbers as well. <laughs> These magicians become plumbers. They put wax in it, so you don't become, it doesn't become wet. Because once the, the, the writing on the Dabis goes, the Dabis is nullified. So this is the correct way of nullifying a Dabis child. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the next question. Please. What are you to read so the black magic does not affect you? Okay, and if you are upset for a reason, what do you do? Okay, two questions. What do you read so black magic doesn't affect you? The adhkar of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, and I mentioned the adhkar. So for example, uh, after Salat al-Fajr, you would recite, for example, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir. A hundred times, you would you would put, put your hands together, blow on your hands. You recite Surah Ikhlas, Surah Falak, Surah Nas. Blow on your hands, smear your hands all over your body. Okay. At night time, before you go to sleep, you would basically recite on some rukia water, spray it around inside your house, make adhan inside your house. Don't allow your houses to become like graveyards. Okay, Rasulullah Sallam, make salah inside your house. That's why the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam is to pray your faraid inside the masajid in congregation. And when you go home, you pray the Sunnahs at home. You sort of mean, brothers, yeah? So, also at the same time, having seven dates. Okay, you can have seven dates as protection. Olive oil, recite on olive oil, smear the olive oil all over your body. Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam used to do that. He used to put it on his hands, he used to put it on his beard, the olive oil, and he used to put it on his feet, Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam. So all these kind of things are your protection, inshallah. Avoid the haram and always do the good. Command good, Amr bin Maruf and in Munkar. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam, sorry, the ayah in the Quran mentions كُنْتُمْ حَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَعْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْحَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My ummah will remain good. Rasulullah is mentioning this, Allah mentioned in the Quran that the ummah of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will remain good. How? How would they remain good? They are the best ummah. How would they, uh, why are we the best ummah? Because we command good and we forbid evil. Today, we forbid evil, we command good. SubhanAllah, it's the opposite we do that, brothers. We see the evil, we, see, we say we didn't see it. We see the haram in the streets, we say we didn't see it. We see the prostitution in the streets, we say we didn't see it. We see the naked billboard posters, we don't address it. Until we become munkar ourselves. You understand, brothers? And then you, yourself, you are alone. By yourself. And what happens? You are more likely to be inflicted when you're by yourself. Shaitan is with the individual, not with the jama'ah. So do the dawah as part of a jama'ah, not as individuals. Do it as collectively. Shaitan is away from that person and you will be protected, inshallah ta'ala. Always have the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your tongue. Allah mentioned in the Quran, those people who become, uh, their chests become tight, and they're leading to depression. Why? It's because they forgot to glorify Allah. And the Rasulullah mentioned the hadith, Kalimatan hafifatin ala nisan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that there's two words that are heavy in the scales of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but are light on the tongue. What are they? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah ladhim. So you saying this will ease your chest. You know how it starts for this? How does it start? You initially, first of all, you have a little bit of anxiety. What is anxiety? Anxiety is when you start to just play around with your toenails and you start playing with them. I don't know what to do. Ooh, don't know what to do. That slowly leads to depression. And depression leads to big problem. That's what it leads to. Depression. Because at least when somebody's inflicted with rukia, uh, with sihir, you can make rukia. At least somebody's inflicted with sihir, uh, with jinn, you can make rukia. But when somebody is inflicted with depression, the rukia will help. But you, you, what are you dealing with? You're dealing with something that's not there, really. It's very difficult, brothers. So brothers, make sure that you have glorification, the word of Allah on your tongue all the time. You driving, subhanAllah wa bihamdihi, subhanAllah wa Instead of putting your music on, din din da, din din da, din din da, din din da. All this time, it's like all the time I hear these brothers doing it all the time. Rukia Mut is another one, brothers. 
You know, in, the, in, the, in Saudi Arabia, brothers, they did a survey in Saudi Arabia where they got two glasses of water, okay? And on one of them, they basically put music. In the, da, in the, da, in the music, okay? And on the other one, they put Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. On this one. Over 24 hours, they played it on the water. They checked the properties of the water which music has been played. And they said the properties were so evil, so horrible, so disgusting under a microscope. They were not pure properties of water. Okay, it had gone, it lost its properties. Okay, but the one that the Rukia had been recited on, the Quran had been recited on, they said it was so pure, so pure, more pure than the snow which comes down, which is the purest form of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what they said. But you know what, brothers? SubhanAllah. Wallahi, brothers. But you know what, brothers? Our body is made from what? Water. How much water? 90% water. So if you're putting music inside you all the time, din din da, din din da, music all the time inside you, you know, and all this uh, bangla type of music, whatever, I don't know. But this stuff of haram type of music all the time inside you, what's going to happen? You're going to begin to have behave like that. Okay, but if you put Quran inside you, Allah will pure your protection. Okay, your home is your aura. At home, what you do is after Maghrib, you close the curtains. After Maghrib, you close the windows. After Maghrib, you don't allow your children to go out and play. You see what I mean, brothers? So your home is your protection. So you don't wear your abaya at home in front of your own mahrams. You wear your abaya outside. Abaya means himar and jilbab. You wear it outside, okay, not inside. Okay, not in front of your mahram, you don't it, but you cover sufficiently in front of your mahram. Okay, at home, inshallah. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. MashaAllah. At night time when you go out, is there jinn outside? Of course there's jinn outside. There's loads of jinn outside. In fact, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done it, there are more jinn than humans. But you know what? Is a favor from Allah. But there's more malaika than jinn and humans put together. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, brothers. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah, we are protected by the malaika. And the malaika on our side, inshallah. Okay, so, good question. But you know, when you go outside, make sure you make dua when you go outside. So, Allah will protect you. Okay? I have a dream. I have dreams quite often of jinns. Being possessed of dog, dogs, snakes, lizards, pigs, chasing dreams, chasing them dreams, often of graves. I have been told that it could be evil eye. No, it's not evil eye. Okay. Is there any truth behind it? Or any particular reason for these dreams? If you are having nasty dreams, okay, and you become restless at night, okay, that could be external. Meaning attack, it could be an internal attack. Meaning external attack, meaning the jinn outside, it could be internal, meaning the jinn inside you that's attacking you. Okay? So the way you would get rid of that is the afkar, your olive oil, the rukia water, you spray it inside the house. Okay? And if the jinn don't leave the house, then you would make adhan in the house, in each corner of the room, and you would spray the rukia water in each corner of the room and the jinn would leave, they'll burn and they would leave. They reside in the corners of the house. If they still don't leave with that, then you would recite Surah Al-Baqarah for three days inside the house. And if they still don't believe, still don't leave with that, then you do something called the Qasm of Sulaiman salam, which is basically, um, you will leave the house, everybody will leave the house, you will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will ask the jinn to earnestly leave the property without harming any Muslim because we are coming in with the army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salam we are coming in with the army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will go in the house with about five or six brothers depends how big, big the house is yeah five or six brothers oh, go straight in the house one will go into the living room one will go into the bedroom one will go salsa everybody would make adhan simultaneously so when the jinn leaves one room it can't go into the other room so it has to leave help and that is called the Qasm of Sulaiman alayhi salam, inshallah. Okay? Another question here is, what is the best way to protect oneself from family, 
from the jinn which are living in the houses. I've just answered that question. Okay, all you do is you make some rukia water, you spray it around inside the house in the corners, make adan in the corners of the house. Okay, and inshallah to protect yourself, you will put olive oil on and make your adhkar inshallah. Read a lot of Quran. A lot of Quran inshallah. It will give you support in your heart inshallah. What about people who get da'vis? Okay, to help pass exams, etc. Put, put on the night path from... Huh? From calamity. Put the right half from something. Okay? And yeah, whatever that something is. The bottom line is, I think I get the question. Da'vis is shirku billah. Okay? We're talking about da'vis which are going to magicians. And asking for the magician's help. Okay? It's shirku billah. You cannot go to them, brothers and sisters. Keep away from them. It's better to solve your problem by returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, brothers, when you die, you are not going to return to who? You are not going to return back to the magician. You're going to return back to Allah. So brothers and sisters, do not refer to any da'avis. Uh, so the people on the right path, from, e.g. from drinking. Okay. Yeah, you need to make, sh make sure that your life is full of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And do not uh, refer to any da'avis. It appears that you are positively engaged in <laughs> polygamy. <laughs> yet you, yet your prophet had one wife. I think suddenly the, the, the microphone's gone. That's <laughs> Subhanallah, <laughs> okay. what a time to go. Somebody's Is that a continuation? <laughs> okay, is it possible for us to have your number? You're welcome to have my number, inshallah. 07949 035291 or alternatively you can contact brother Bilal at the back and I think he's uh, I think there are some, some brothers that know his number okay I am going to be coming back biiznillah uh, because today I won't be able to do any cases at all but I will come back inshallah and I'll do some cases and if any brothers sincerely want to learn Rukya Sharia, okay, they are welcome to learn the Rukya Sharia. There's another brother sitting there, and I want to give him Hajj Babru, inshallah, okay? He's sitting there at the back, inshallah. He himself, uh, Brother Abdul Aziz, inshallah. Salaamu Alaikum, brother. Okay? He's going to organize also a talk in Derby, okay, on how a deep course on how to uh, make Rukya how to make rukia water, how to remove the avis, and so and so. Inshallah, you can contact him if you're close by Derby. If you are, want the same course inside Halifax, you can contact this brother here, this beautiful mashallah brother next to me. Brother Bilal, inshallah, you can contact as well, inshallah. Or you can contact brother... Where's he from? Oh, there he is. Brother is one. Okay, inshallah, you can contact him, inshallah. So my number is 07949 Okay. I have some more questions here. How do you deal with a person, a person who falsely accuses another of black magic because their, their marriage isn't working? As Muslims, we deal with the apparent. We don't deal with the inner. So if you've got definite evidence, you can accuse somebody. If you haven't got definite evidence, do not accuse somebody. You know why? Because a man came to Umar bin al-Khattab and he said, you know, so and so person did this and so and so person did this did that. And Umar bin, Umar bin al Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what did he say? He said, do you want me to ver verify what you've just said? He said, no, you don't need to verify it. He goes, no, I do. He goes, if you don't want me to verify, 
then you fall into the category of the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those people who basically accuse somebody without evidence, those people are fasik. Have you seen those people come to somebody without the lead, without evidence, fasik, and so on and so on. So brothers and sisters, do not accuse anybody, any Muslim, okay? Be sure 100%. Because shaitan is there to cause fitna between you and somebody else. Inshallah. How can you find out has been done to you? How do you find out if, if uh, black magic I think has been done to you? Easily. You get a CD or you can download Surah Al-Baqarah. Listen to it with headphones. Listen to it with headphones and then certain symptoms will appear on your body. For example, excessive blinking, pain inside the body, cramps inside the stomach. You feel uneasy when you listen to Surah Al-Baqarah. This will be your sign that you have been inflicted with sihr or black magic. Sihr or black magic, inshallah. And the CD, I can forward it to you. Okay, I can forward the CD to you if you contact me or if you just text me your email address, I'll forward you the CD, inshallah. Ta'ala. Okay, these people that are Yeah, brother. Those people who are involved in black magic and clairvoyancy and uh, issuing the Ta'adis, um, Shirku Billah. Straight away, brother, as Muslims, because we deal with the apparent, okay? We see somebody do it, he become kafir straight away. Kafir straight away. Make bayan on him. Make that fear on him straight away. And say to him, do you know what you're doing? Make tawbah now. Make tawbah now, you say to him. Leave it and make tawbah now. Because you know what? This stuff is very serious. Very, very serious. Very, very serious, inshallah. <laughs> yeah, you recite the whole. You recite the whole of the Surah Al Baqarah, all of it, okay, with all the with all the doors open inside the house, all of the doors open inside the house, loud inside the house, so that so it carries everywhere inside the house, inshallah, okay. Yeah, no, because you know what, the Rukia is on the breath. But you can play the CD at home. It's not as effective as the Rukia on the breath. Because Rasulullah said, we cite Surah al baqarah in the house. Okay? So we do we cite the Surah al baqarah because it's Ibadat. Okay? I'll give you an example. There's something called Ahkam Tawkifiyah. Which means that we would do it exactly the way Rasulullah did it. Okay? Exactly the way he did it. We don't make any judgment. We don't make it up in our mind. I'll give you an example. Say for example now, the Haram. Turn around and say, we want to make the Dawaf easier on the Perth people. And we put the conveyor belt around. Don't make Dawaf. Would that be allowed? No. Because it's Ahkam Tawkifiyah. It's to do with Pacific. If I said to you now, instead of us reciting Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah, whatever, 33, 33, 34, I said, no, let's do 63, 54, 55. It's not allowed, you see? Because it's specific. If, if somebody commits zina and we say it's 100 lashes or 80 lashes for somebody, for example, yeah? Can we change that? We can't. The hadul of Allah is fixed, isn't it, brother? It's the same thing, brother, with. Uh, what we are saying here, when you recite the Surah Al-Baqarah, because the Hadith mentioned recite, it's Ibadat. When you recite it, brother, the Rukia is on your breath. And the jinn do not like that at all. You can put the CD on. It's not as effective. It's not as effective. You can do it. I'll give you an example. Many a times, brothers, many people, they listen to the CD and they get, they get a reaction from the CD. Some people that listen to the CD say, oh brother, I never got any reaction. But when I make, when I recite myself on them, they get a reaction. Because the Rukia is in the breath. That's why you see brother Abu Muhammad, he is right up to the face when he's reciting. He's looking at the person like this. Why are you here? What are you doing here? Allahu la ilaha illa. And he repeats certain ayahs of Tawheed. 
الله لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم الله لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم الله لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم repeat it repeat it repeat it sometimes it suffices for that to just to recite surah al-fatiha i have to say the three kuns and you'll get a reaction you'll get a reaction i've got a question here i've got a question here about obviously me mentioning about third and fourth wife and so on so on and how come he didn't mention anything about the sisters the women allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when this ayah is when this ayah was revealed قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ مِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِكٍ إِذَا وَقَبِ This ayah when it was revealed, revealed this ayah, this, uh, this surah when it was revealed, was addressing the women. Ibn Kathir, Hafid Ibn Kathir, Ibn Abbas, they're all mentioned is addressing the women, the ones that go to the sides. Because without them, they are the ones they have jealousy in their heart and they want to do something quickly. It's the women, it's just the women. So when we talk about these ayat and salta, when we talk about the first and fifth wife, you know what something? A woman can easily enter into paradise. All she has to do is obey her husband and Allah give her many gates for her to enter into paradise, inshallah. Ya Allah, anyone you want, you've got it, inshallah. And not only that, your husband in this dunya will be your husband in the akhirah as well. Subhanallah, what more does a woman want sometimes? Subhanallah, obviously. Obviously, but they went. Inshallah. Okay, so, but Allah bless the sisters because they are the school of the children. Okay, so, inshallah, ta'ala, may Allah bless the sisters. I said, brother, kill us. You know that sisters, they die, they're the heart of the sisters. Sister who dies without marriage. It depends. If she was inflicted with sicker of being killed in marriage, and just normally, you know, the sunnah of Rasulullah is to get married. Okay, to get married. And the sister, the sister who says, the sister who says that she doesn't want to get married. She's, she's going against the Sunnah of Rasulullah but it's not a sin. It's not a sin. So she would be account. She she won't be. She will be accountable for that. It's not a sin. Oh, you're talking about the young ones. Okay. Okay, I lost one time and now I have to get married. <laughs> okay. okay, sister who dies without she's not valid. She's not valid? She may be valid but she dies without getting married. Sorry, guys, for anyone. No, that's my answer to you. My answer to you, brother, is that a sister who dies, okay, without getting married. Marriage is the sunnah of the Sallallahu It's not an obligation. It's not an obligation. Yeah. Oh, okay. On the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will choose someone for her on your Mubiyama. Allah will choose somebody for her on your Mubiyama. That's what, that's what that's the answer, isn't it? Alhamdulillah. Allah will choose somebody for her. Because in Jannah, brother, whatever you ask for, Allah will give you. So, brother, if you ask for women, you get them. You ask for a house, Allah will give it to you. So, if Tawiz is doing on, on somebody, and I personally know somebody, Tawiz is doing on him, and there's a gin inside the body, because with Tawiz. Yeah. We went to someone to get Rukia doing it. Rukia was doing on him. Yeah. When Rukia was doing on him, the gin had left the body. Brother, I think this time we said last question. Okay. Um, I was into my question. Yeah, you can, you can ask this question to the brother. Okay, okay go on, ask the question. We'll make this the last question. 
Sorry, brother. I'll make it short, brother. Okay. 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 Now he is doing someone, some individual. He's affected now. Now he's affected. The magic is in Pakistan, in the grave, buried in the grave. This one is suffering here. So when Rukia has done on him, the jinn leaves his body. The, the individual is perfect, he's fine. For a few days, that jinn is gone. Another jinn comes to his body. So he's gone back to the, the person who performed the Rukia. The person is saying that because the Tawi is still active, the jinn is going to keep coming until the Tawi is not diffused. So how is it? How is that Tawi supposed to be diffused if he's in another country and he's been affected? How is that possible? What do you do, brothers? In those circumstances, okay, the, all you've got to do is got to keep making rook out of the person, keep attacking the jinn, let the jinn know that you're not going to have any power over me, okay? Because I know many cases that I've dealt with, the jinn has never left, but it's become insignificant inside the body, okay? That it has no power. And the only thing the jinn can do is what's what's up. That's what the jinn can do. The Tawis can remain active, but you're not bothered. Of, you're not bothered about the Tawis as of such. You just don't want to get those feelings of pain, burning sensation, like the, like the brother mentioned. Your, 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 his feet were burning, his arms were burning. You want to diffuse all that. So when you make the jinn weak inside the body, the jinn can never become strong again, never ever, unless you do the haram, the bad deeds. The more haram you do the more energized they will become. So that's the only way you can do it. Sometimes brothers, they throw the Tawis into the sea. Okay, and you know what? You can't find it. You, can, you, you can't find the Tawis like that. Sometimes it's on the, it's on the uh, tree. Sometimes it's buried. You don't know where it is. There's no importance. It's not necessary. That's right. Brother. That's right. But eventually the jinn will become so fed up. Okay, and what will happen? It will go. But the Tawis in those circumstances can be topped up very quickly. Right. Very quickly, brother. So you need to be always on the ball, have seven days in the morning and so on. So on. Barakallahu feekum, inshaAllah. Barakallahu feekum, inshaAllah.